I was a little girl, my mama used to sit me in front of the bathroom mirror, just like you, doing my hair. And she would tell me to tell myself that I was special and I was beautiful. And I didn't quite understand why she was telling me to tell myself these things when she was perfectly capable of telling me those things herself. But I think my mother knew that I would get older and go into the world and people would have a lot to say about me to me so that it was important that I affirmed myself on a regular basis. So today I am special and I am beautiful. I am radiant and unfading. I am radiant and unfading. And I am easily discerned by those who love me. And one who is vigilant on my account will soon be free from care because I go about seeking those who are worthy of me. I go about seeking those who are worthy of me. Are they worthy of me? When reading this text through the lens of my life experience as a black woman, I immediately sought comfort in wisdom, in myself, in identifying myself as her, as she. Yes, we are all wisdom, but the black woman's wisdom, however, runs deep, deeply buried in the bloody soil of this nation, from pushing white babies through Central Park in expensive strollers, to writing dissertations that the Academy don't want to publish from knowing just how much baking powder goes in the cake mix without measuring to braiding your daughter's hair with your eyes closed. This wisdom, this black woman's wisdom runs deep. It is ingrained in the fabric of this nation. She is radiant and she is unfading, the text says. Another translation says she is brilliant. I am brilliant and unfading, and yet, yet her radiance is exploited. She is often complimented but not comforted. They desire to dig into her well of resources, to dig in wisdom's gold mine. They desire to own her as if she could be bought or sold. They dig and they dig and they dig in the black woman's resources. They dig and they dig and they dig in the black woman's wisdom. But are they worthy of her? Are they worthy of you? Do they love you or do they just love what you can do for them? Are they worthy? Because wisdom goes about seeking those who are worthy of her. The conversation today, my friends, is not about the pedestal portrayal of wisdom. People are quick to put you on display for their benefit. The text is not a review of wisdom in all of her radiance and brilliance and glory and her inability to fade. The question today is, after all of that digging and praising and digging and worshiping and mining and digging, are they worthy of her? Are they worthy of the diamonds of knowledge you drop in class? Are they worthy of your intellectualism, of the brilliant thoughts they ask you to expound upon? Are, are they worthy of your knowledge of hip hop, Vicky? Are they worthy of your radiant brilliance that turns everything you touch to gold? Are they worthy? Or are they possessive? Or are they entitled? You see, that's why some people ask us to unpack our blackness as if they can't go to the library. That's why they be sliding in your DMs asking for your sermon. That's why they reference your profound statuses in papers without citation. That's why Melania Trump can plagiarize a speech and deliver it as her own because we are radiant and we are unfading and we are a gold mine and we are brilliant, but are they worthy of us? Us. The question of worthiness is befitting to this text. The placement of this wisdom of Solomon is peculiar in the Apocrypha, which means hidden or secret. 
It's almost as if it's not worthy of proper recognition. Some of the texts were hidden because their authority was questioned. We didn't know the author or the date, which is like most of the Bible, but whatever. Others, <laughs> however, others, however, were hidden, were kept secret because they were believed to be too esoteric. They were believed to be too profound, too divine to just be disclosed to just any and everybody. And I, I find it interesting today that this wisdom text, this text that is supposed to illuminate and deepen our relationship with the divine, this wisdom text, like the black woman, is relegated to the corner of what is deemed sacred or left out altogether. We are to read it and reflect on it, perhaps, but it is not to outshine what is considered dominant. We are to pull from it, but we can't acknowledge its resources. This apocrypha, like the black woman, was too profound and too divine, too rich with knowledge, a gold mine of wisdom, a lighthouse on a hill. This wisdom text, like the black woman, pushed into the deuterocanon, was too profound, too divine. We are too profound and too divine. So we we are set aside in the back houses, in the corner of the cotton fields, forced to worship in the clearing, calling tiny attic spaces in the big house home, playing mistress at night and maid in the morning. Too profound, they said set aside for private consumption, followed by public castration, used and abused in the kitchens and nurseries of society, but denounced in the streets and ignored in the hallways. Too divine and too profound, they said complimented in class, but not cared for in times of crisis, taken advantage of for fundraising brochures, yet disregarded in meetings about a tower too divine and too profound. We live the Deuterocanon daily in the halls of union, in our corporate America cubicles, in patriarchal church environments that would rather keep us teaching disnified Bible stories in Sunday school than burning up the pulpit with our brilliance. And yet, and yet, here we are. Our melanin, our black girl magic literally makes it impossible to fade in the abyss of whiteness. This irony of my darkness being a lighthouse, how radiant and how brilliant that is. We are still here and our radiance shall be known to the world. My friends, people of the marginalized and the oppressed, people who are weary and are worn but are still here. This hidden text offers us more than wisdom today. It offers us redemption, a chance to become one with what was hidden and what was secret and take that radiance and that brilliance into the world. It offers us redemption. This text, found by those who are worthy of it, proves that we don't have to stay a secret hidden in the dusty corner of Burke Library, hidden in the pews of our sanctuaries. If we are who we say we are, we have to start stepping out of the hidden and the secret and declare today that we will not be relegated to the apocrypha of this institution. We will not be the illegitimate child of this backwards nation we will not be just another black woman whose story lies dormant in the deuterocanon of textbooks. We will not fall victim to sexism and misogyny war. We will not sink under the pressures of homophobia and transphobia and classism and bigotry because we are radiant and we are unfading. Say it with me, I am radiant and unfading. Say it like you mean it. I am radiant and unfading. I am brilliant and I am glorious. And only those who seek me, who truly love me and care for me are worthy of me and shall find me. And, and, and this message is not just for 
the black women and girls in this room, perhaps we should all reconsider who and what we expend our wisdom on who and what we expend our energy on, who and what we share our radiance and our brilliance with. Because there's a world outside of these walls that need us, that need our wisdom and our passion for justice more than the halls of union. There's a classroom of homeless folk right outside these doors that deserve the radiance and the brilliance we waste on people who could just check out a book. I charge you today to reconsider the worth of your wisdom. I charge you to step out of your hiding places I charge you to seek those who are worthy of you because you are radiant and unfading. Ashe.